Namaste, yogis. Welcome. Thank you so much for watching. So today's practice, you might want to have a strap or a belt, a scarf handy, and a blanket. If you want any more props, uh, you're welcome to have them handy as well. And do what you can. Remember, don't force your body. Follow your breath. And let's begin. We're going to start laying down on our backs on Shavasana. So you can go ahead and relax on your back. You're going to bring your hands by your sides, palms facing up, draw your shoulder blades together and under, squeeze your bum and release your sacrum on the floor. Let your feet flare just naturally and observe. You can move your head maybe side to side just to make sure that you find that perfect spot at the back of your head so that it keeps your neck aligned with the rest of the spine. Bring the awareness down to your feet and relax your toes, relax your foot soles, relax the top of your feet, relax your ankles, relax your lower legs, your knees, relax your thighs. Relax your buttocks. Allow your hips and shoulders to be heavy. Relax your arms. Feel the weight of your arms and soften your hands. Let them curl naturally into your palms. No tension, no effort, just relaxation. Soften your neck, your jaw. Pay attention to your back. If there is any discomfort, please adjust. If this is uncomfortable, um, staying with your legs extended, you can bend your knees and rest your feet on the floor. Tuck your tailbone and you can allow your feet to be maybe mat with apart and let your knees rest together at the center. Your feet doesn't have to be that far apart, by the way, or else continue relaxing on your Shavasana. Breathing deeply, rising and falling. Tuning in your Dirga Pranayama. Expanding into your belly. Fill up your back body, your sides, your chest, your shoulders, until there is no more space for air to move in. And when you exhale, let all the air go. Rising as you inhale, expand. Falling as you exhale, let go. Rising. Falling. Rising, falling. Take one more breath like this, full deep breath. Rising on the inhalation, expand at the very top of your lungs. And when you exhale, think about releasing your, the air completely. Don't hold anything back. And on your next inhalation, wiggle your toes. Move your feet side to side. Exhale, wiggle your fingers. Maybe rotate your feet and your hands both ways. Next time you inhale, stretch your arms overhead. Tense every muscle. Squeeze your legs, your glutes tight, tight, tight. Maybe flex your feet or point you pick. And when you exhale, let all the air go. Inhale, deeply stretch and tense and squeeze every muscle. Tight, 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 hold, stretch, tense. Balloon face, release. Last one, breathe in, stretch and squeeze from toes to fists. Balloon face. And let all tension go. Bring your arms out to the sides. Hmm. Throw your shoulder blades together. Find that place that feels just right for your upper back and your neck. 
bend your knees, bring your foot soles on the floor, tuck your tailbone once more, walk your feet mat with a pot. We're just gonna help um, the hips to find the ra its range of motion of today. So really pay attention how far your knees go without pinching. And you want to stay always within that range of motion. And as you continue to move through the practice, maybe your hips allow you a little more, maybe not. So just really listen to what the body is saying. A gentle rotation of the hips as your knees go side to side. It's a little bit, you're gonna get a little bit of a spinal twist here. It's very, a very minimal as your pelvis rotates along with the, with the knees. Awesome, and when you are ready, come back to center and heel toe your feet together. Well, you're gonna bring your feet about fist distance apart and your knees as well. Bring your hands by your sides, palms facing down. We're going to combine our um, shoulder um, movement against arthritis with Setu Bandhasana or bridge pose. Watch for the shoulder if there is some clicking going on don't do that, keep your hands right here and from here we work, okay? Otherwise, as you inhale, you're gonna move your arms in a circular motion, fill up your tummy, tilt your pelvis into an anterior tilt, so that means that you have an arch on your back, your palms face one another. Now, as you continue to inhale, just do it with your normal breath for now as I explain you the movement and then let's see if we can do it along with the breath. All right, so as you are here, palms are facing one another, maybe hold the breath if it's in your practice to do kumbaka. If not, don't bother, continue to breathe in as you pull your fingertips towards the back. When you exhale, palms face up, squeeze your bum, tuck your tailbone and lift the hips as your hands come up and by your sides, right on the floor in starting position. As you inhale, hips down, pelvic tilt, reach up, palms face, maybe kumbaka, pull back as you hold, feel your ribcage moving away from the hips, and when you exhale, flip your palms up, squeeze your bum, tuck the tailbone, and bring your hips up as you bring your hands up and down. Inhale, pelvic tilt, circular motion of the arms. Maybe kumbaka, reach. Exhale, palms up, tuck the tailbone, squeeze the bum. Setu bandhasana. Inhale, circle. Reach. Palms up, squeeze, tuck the tailbone. Don't let your knees flare in, uh, flare out or knock in. Watch for those knees. Make sure you're not putting any pressure on your lumbar spine. Inhale down, slow down your breath so you don't have to rush through movement. Don't worry about holding the breath, remember. We're gonna do three more. Feet are active. That means maybe your toes might be, uh, be lifted. Last one. Inhale, release your hands by your sides. Exhale, walk your feet together, knees together. Move your head side to side. Make sure that you're not putting any tension here on your neck. Observe. On your next inhalation, bring your hands overhead. You can you can allow your pelvis to tilt, you don't have to. Now walk your feet together, knees together if you, if you haven't. Squeeze your inner thighs and as you exhale, press your navel down, tuck your tailbone, bring your hands up and by your sides, bring your knees up. Inhale, reach back, foot soles on the floor. Exhale, before your knees come up, tuck your tailbone and then lift. Inhale. Exhale, inhale, 
not putting any pressure on the neck, it's important. Draw the navel down. Inhale. Exhale and hold. Adjust your neck, bend your elbows, bring your hands in front of your thighs, and every time you exhale, you're going to move your knees towards you and your hands away from you, so creating some resistance here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And push. Inhale and push. Engage your core. Try to press your body down to the best of your ability. Inhale. And push. Last one. Inhale. And push. And inhale, foot uh, soles on the floor. Release your hands. Take a few moments. Observe. Awesome. As you inhale, bring your hands overhead. Interlace your fingers into Jupiter Mudra. <clears throat> As you exhale, maybe just the knees and the mudra. And press yourself down. If it works for your neck, lift your shoulders and your head off the floor, but without putting any pressure on the neck. So we're not pulling the head forward. Inhale, down. Exhale, press your back onto the floor and lift. Pressing your shoulder blades towards each other and down towards the floor. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Switch your mudra, so we're going to interlace the other way. Index finger pointing. Inhale here. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Last one. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. Bring your foot soles back onto the floor. And as you exhale, release your hands by your sides. Allow your foot soles to touch and let your knees flare. Take a few moments here. The next time you inhale, bring your hands by your sides, palms facing down. Adjust your back and your neck if needed. Engage your feet so you want uh, your toes spreading and maybe moving away from each other. And Pranayama against arthritis, against shoulder arthritis. So we're going into full circle of the arms. Inhale. Palms face. Press your body down. Move your ribcage back towards the fingertips. Pull your fingertips away from your toes. And when you exhale, palms face up. Squeeze your bum. Pick up the hips. Bring your hands by your sides. Watch for your neck so you're not flattening the neck. As you inhale, hands by your sides, hips down, butterfly position, Konasana, with shoulder against arthritis, um, pranayama against shoulder arthritis. Maybe kumbhaka, exhale, palms face up, squeeze your bum, lift onto your butterfly bridge. Inhale, circle, knees down towards the floor, pull up. And as you exhale, palms face up, squeeze your bum and lift. Inhale, palms up, reach back. Reach higher. Palms face up, squeeze your bum, exhale, lift. Inhale, circle. Pull away. Palms up, exhale, squeeze your bum and lift. And let's do one more. Inhale. Kumbaka, maybe. Exhale. Squeeze in your buttocks. 
Awesome. The next time you inhale, hands by your sides. Exhale, hips down, release onto butterfly position. Take a few moments. If you need to come out of butterfly and relax your hips, you're welcome to do that. If you're comfortable here, we stay here. Let your body decide what it's gonna be. Breathe. We'll take one more breath, full deep breath. Bring your hands overhead as you inhale. And as you exhale, press your feet towards each other, squeeze your bum, bring your knees up and bring your hands to touch your knees. Feet are active. Press your body against the floor. Inhale, reach back. Exhale, flying butterfly. Inhale, reach back. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale and stay. Keep pressing your back down. Inhale deeply here. And as you exhale, you may push your knees out to the sides. Push your legs towards you, and with your hands, you create that resistance on the exhalation. Inhale, release. Exhale, resistance. Inhale, release. Exhale. Inhale, watch for your shoulders. Exhale, see if you can engage your shoulder blades at the same time. Inhale, and exhale. Awesome, inhale, feet onto the floor. Exhale, release, hands by your sides. Take a few moments, observe. When you are ready, reach your hands overhead. Interlace your fingers into Jupiter Mudra. Actually, bring your hands up towards the sky. Jupiter Mudra, shoulders back and down. As you inhale, reach your arms back. Pull your fingertips away. Pull your ribcage away from the hips. As you exhale, butterfly position comes up, your feet and knees. Maybe keep your head down if you have any neck concerns. Otherwise, lift your head and shoulders just like you have been doing. As you inhale, return down. Exhale, lift. Squeeze your body down. Inhale, down. Exhale, squeeze. And breathe. Inhale, down. Change your mudra, interlace the other way, exhale up. Inhale down. Exhale. One more, inhale. And exhale. Press your back down, it's okay if you're shake, shaking. And as you inhale, bring yourself down. Exhale, release your hands by your sides. Take a few moments, observe. When you're ready, bring your knees up. Extend your legs and take a few moments, watch your breath. Now you can have your blanket handy to put under your knees. When you are ready, you're gonna bend your knees and bring your foot soles on the floor and move on to your favorite side. Take a few moments once you get here. Remember here is where we check in with the body, with the breath, with the mind as well. Use your top hand to help yourself up on your next exhalation. Now from here, you're gonna take your blanket if you're using one, 
and go towards the back of your mat. So you're gonna sit back on your heels. Be, uh, make sure this is comfortable for your knees. If not, you can always stay away from it. Make sure that it, this feels okay on the knees, whatever you pick. And now from here, knees apart by the way, rest your forehead maybe on your stacked fists, maybe on your hands, maybe down onto the floor. Stay here for a few moments, deep in your breath. Softening through the hips. Take one more breath here, full deep breath. The next time you inhale, bring your hands under the shoulders, and as you exhale, push yourself up. We're gonna work, uh, walk the hands towards the front of the mat and find tabletop position. So remember for your tabletop, you want your knees under the hips, about fist, fist and a half distance between them. Top of the feet are right on the floor. If you're cramping, you can curl the toes under, that's okay. If you have a big hinge on your back and you feel like going into a cow stretch, try to resist that temptation and draw your navel in. Um, and for your hands, the same thing. Try to engage them evenly so you put equal weight on them. Spread your fingers wide. Don't hyperextend your pinky. And your thumbs will be pointing one another. The eyes of the elbows or the pits of the elbows face the short end of the mat, the front of the mat. Awesome. Take one breath here, full deep breath, inhale. And when you're ready, exhale, let all the air go. Curl the toes under when there is no more air. Pick up the knees just for a few inches. Inhale, knees down, uncurl the toes. Exhale, curl the toes when there is emptiness, lift. Inhale, knees down, uncurl the toes. Exhale, curl the toes under. And towards the end of your exhalation, pick up the knees, just a couple of inches. Equal weight on your hands. Inhale, knees down, uncurl the toes. And as you exhale, curl the toes under and lift. You may stay here and breathe. Push the mat away from you. And the next time you inhale, bring your knees slowly down onto the floor. And as you exhale, sit back on your uh, heels. You can curl the toes under. If your feet are cramping, mine are today. You can stack your fist, press your forehead down and breathe. Even if your feet are not cramping, you can try curling the toes under. It's a nice stretch for your foot soles. Take one more breath here, full deep breath. And as you inhale, slowly lift, bring your hands on the floor under the shoulders and come up onto your knees. Walk to tabletop. Now maybe uncurl the toes and as you inhale, tailbone up, drop your belly, shoulder blades together, look forward or up, cow stretch. As you exhale, tuck your tailbone, round your back, let your head dangle. Inhale, tailbone up, drop your belly, cow stretch. Exhale, tuck your tailbone, round your back. Push the mat away from you. Inhale, cow stretch. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, round your back. Inhale, come to tabletop position. Exhale, curl the toes under, pick up the knees, just like you did, and push your chest to the thighs and start extending your body, moving your chest to the thighs as close as you can without worrying about extending your legs for now. Keep your knees bent, keep your toes off the floor if your feet allow for that, and maybe try to rest your heels on the ground. Eyes of the elbows face forward, try to tilt your pelvis into one anterior tilt so you have a little bit of an arch on your lower back. 
relax your neck. Keep your shoulders into its sockets. Breathe deeply here. If you are, t uh, if this is too much for your wrist, please go onto your elbows instead. You may keep your uh, fists close and shoulder width apart if this is okay for your shoulders. And if this is still not okay, stay with your knees down and maybe walk slightly towards the top of the mat, keeping the elongation of your back. Whichever version, breathe deeply, we'll take three more breaths. One more breath. Next time you inhale, bring your knees onto the floor. If you are already on your knees, come up on your hands on tabletop. And as you exhale, step forward with your right foot. Awesome. Now from here, curl the back toes under, pick up the knees and the knee and stretch the back leg. Front knee stays bent. Now you can put your blanket out of the way for now and maybe have your uh, strap handy. You may use it, you may not. Awesome, now from where we are, adjust that front foot, keep it active, those points straight forward, engage your glutes, and with control, as you inhale, come all the way up onto warrior one. <laughs> so you can shorten your stance if you want. What you want is to try to bring your hips to the short end of the mat. Make sure it's not pinching your knees, none of them. Adjust your foot if needed. And the front knee is bent right over the heel. Now passing the heel, try to stay over it to protect it. Hands together at the center of the heart. Breathe deeply here. Activating your feet, so putting a little bit of weight on the outer edge of your left foot. On your next inhalation, open your hip towards the left and adjust your foot, maybe walk your foot farther back. So in the end, maybe the um, arch of the back foot is centered with your front heel. It doesn't have to be that way, but see if that works for your knees and your hips. Your hips might be facing the long end of the mat, but when you do that, check for the knee because sometimes the knee collapses in and we don't want that. Instead. Keep your knee pointing towards the center of your right foot, even if your hips go slightly to the right. That's not a big, uh, big deal. Big joint takes care of the small joint. Inhale, arms out to the side, steep position. Exhale, retract your shoulder blades so you wander your wings together and then pull them down. Feet are still active. Next time you exhale, move your upper body towards the right, towards that bent knee. And as you exhale, you may rest your arm on your thigh and your left hand goes maybe onto your lower back. Palm faces away from the body. Now make sure you're not collapsing onto your leg. If you're quite flexible, just try to keep your body elongated. That front knee stays bent unless your leg or knee says no, you can extend your leg a little bit. Find your breath. If the breath becomes choppy, then you have gone too far. You can also uh, change your stance. You can bring your legs closer together or farther apart. Now when you're ready, maybe bring your hand to the inside of your foot and use that hand to leverage and help you rotate upwards. Breathe. Some of you might bring the hand forward and rest it behind towards the outside of your leg. Maybe bring your left hand towards the sky. You don't have to. Keep lifting. So you are still going down, but you are holding yourself up. You're not just collapsing here. Watch it. Activate your feet, engage your glutes, and the next time you exhale, pull up with your top hand, come up onto warrior two. Breathe. Inhale deeply here. And as you exhale, extend your leg, toes point forward, take a few moments, move your hips side to side. Shoulders back and down. So your toes point towards uh, the uh, long end of the mat. Bend your knees, hinge at the hips. Slide your hands down your legs and find that place that works for you. You may hold against your shins, push your arms against your legs and your shoulders down. Keep your gaze down, activate your feet. 
Some of you might touch down on the toes and still create that action of pressing against your toes, pushing your shoulders down. Maybe start extending your legs a little bit. You don't have to. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. Bend your knees a lot, bring your hands on your thighs, and with control, start bringing your body up. Walk your hands, shoulders back and down. Turn your uh, left toes out to the left and your right toes in. So we're gonna shift all the way onto warrior one again. Squeeze your buttocks, bend your front knee, hands together in namaste. Don't let your body arch a lot, tuck your tailbone. Back leg is extended, front knee is bent. You don't have to go too deep into it. Remember, you, can, you always have the choice to make it a little easier depending what your body is feeling like. Make sure your feet are active and you're using your breath. Once you have collected your breath, the next time you inhale, open your hip and your torso towards the right this time, so facing again the long end of the mat. Walk your foot back if you need to. You can have that outer edge of the foot parallel to the uh, short end of the mat, or you can bring your toes slightly in for the right foot. Your left toes point straight towards the left. All right, watch for your knees, T position, blades together, shoulders down, breathe deeply. The next time you exhale, hinge towards your, shoulder, um, your left, and then bring your left arm on your thigh and bring your right hand on your lumbar spine. And then check with your legs, your feet again. Notice if you are collapsing, if your breath is choppy, adjust when needed. And maybe when you're ready, bring your hand inside your leg. So you might, some of you will put the hand flat on the floor, but that's not a goal. If you can, don't go that far. Try to engage all of your muscles instead. Maybe bring your leg forward, your uh, left arm forward, and then behind you, and breathe. Maybe your right hand goes up to the sky. Remember, whatever you're doing, you're trying to get that um, right shoulder back and your torso rotated upward. Watch for your neck, gaze can be up, down, forward. Use your top hand to help yourself up on your next exhalation. Deep position of the arm, shoulders back and down. Inhale, extend your leg. Exhale, toes point forward. Once again, bend your knees a lot, hinge at the hips and glide your hands down. Find that length that will work for your back, for your hips, bend your knees and breathe. Some of you might reach down for the toes, but don't make it a goal. Your hips will let you know when it's too much. Do listen to them. Active feet, send the weight to the heels and still press the balls of the feet on the floor so that you keep your glutes engaged. Retract your shoulder blades. Bend your knees a lot, bring your hands on your thighs and with control, come up. Shoulders back and down, step towards the back of the mat, walk it out. Awesome. I'm gonna take one more breath here, finding Tadasana. So you want about fist distance between the big toes, maybe a little wider, that's okay. And about the same uh, between your knees. So once you find that alignment of the feet, the outer edges of the feet might be parallel to the outer edges of the mat. Tuck your tailbone a little bit so your pubic bone and hip bones are balanced and parallel to the front wall, if you have one, or perpendicular to the floor. All right, palms face forward, shoulders back and down, active feet, maybe close your eyes. Observe your breath. We'll take one more breath here in Tadasana, full deep breath. 
bring your hands on your hips. And on your next inhalation, step forward with your right foot. Here is where we, you might have your strap handy. Actually, I'm going to use mine and you are welcome to get yours. If not, that's okay, I'll give you options and then you just pick the one that works for you. So once again, right foot forward, left foot goes slightly onto an angle. So your left toes point, point out to the left. Your stand is not too wide, so just a little wider than a normal step. Hips and chest face the short end of the mat, shoulders back and down. Now as you inhale, bring your right arm up, push up, extending through the right side, palm away, exhale, circle your arm behind you, other side. Inhale, reach up, palm away. Circle, palm away, and then circle back. Now here, you can either interlace your fingers into chest expander. You can hold onto your left wrist and go onto Gyan Mudra with your left hand. You could also hold onto your forearms, onto your elbows. Some of you might go onto Anjali, um, backwards Anjali Mudra, you don't have to, especially don't if your wrist don't like it. Or you can hold your strap, shoulder width apart, hold your shoulders under, activate your feet, lengthen through the spine once you have picked your arm position. Exhale, squeeze your buttocks left and right and hinge back a little bit just a little bit back then. You put some demand on your lumbar spine, but not pinching it. Then maybe, just maybe, your gaze goes up. Lift, think about lifting the collarbone. Feet are active, legs and glutes are active. Knees are extended, but they're not hyperextending. The next time you inhale, come back to an upright position. As you exhale, rotate your torso towards your right and hinge at the hips. Keep your spine neutral. That front knee have that micro bend, purposely bend it a little bit. Otherwise, it's gonna push back. Don't lock it. Some of you might bring the rib cage down towards the thigh. You don't have to. Stay within a place that works for you. Don't make it a goal to touch your leg with your tummy or with your forehead or whatever it is that you're trying to do, make sure it feels right. It's okay if you touch, but it's okay if you don't. It's okay as well if you don't. Awesome, we'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. Next time you inhale, lengthen through the spine, and engage your bum and your legs. Exhale, slowly and with control, come up onto an upright. Have your strap to the side or around your neck. Bend your front knee as you inhale and as you exhale, help yourself up. Walk it out, shake the tension off. Awesome, we're gonna do the other side. Tadasana, engage. Step forward with left foot, right foot slightly out to the side. Once you're ready and you have balanced your hips and shoulders to the best of your ability, go ahead and find your hand position. If you're holding onto your wrist, this time you're going to hold onto the other wrist, onto your right wrist, going onto Gyan Mudra. I'm going to do the same thing, so I'm going to have my strap again. Lengthen through the spine, engage your buttocks, inhale deeply here. Exhale, gentle side bend, breathe. Remember, there is a little bit of a back bend. Don't go too deep into it, especially if you're quite flexible. Try to, try to resist that temptation. We're just gonna really engage our muscles here to stabilize the body. The next time you inhale, come back to an upright. And as you exhale, rotate your torso to the left, and once more, hinging at the hips, micro bending that front knee, go forward. Always watching what the legs want to do because they might want to just go into a lock and we don't want that. Your arms can rest on your sacrum, your hands, or you can bring them up. Don't let it pinch your shoulders either. 
Some of you might soften down, some of you stay more active and up. Either way, heels press onto the floor so your glutes are activating. Elongate your neck, don't let your head collapse. This can be a balancing pose for some of us too. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. Inhale, engage your glutes, your legs. And as you exhale with control, come up. You can put your strap aside for now. Bend, bring your hands on your hips, bend the front knee. And when you exhale, return to the back of the mat, walk it out, shake the tension off your feet. You may have some water now. Maybe not, that's okay. And then go back to Tadasana. Shoulders away from the ears, hands by your sides. Take a few moments. Bring your hands on your hips and step forward with your right foot. Now, normal step, bend the front knee, watch for that front foot, activate it. Hips stay facing forward to the best of your ability and the next time you exhale, step forward and bring that back foot off the floor. And maybe today our practice is trying to get that foot off the ground and that's okay. If you manage to keep it off the ground and it feels okay for your right hip to hinge forward from your pelvis, you do that. Push in that back heel away from you. That will help to stabilize your pelvis. Engage both glutes. Bring your hands by your sides, palms face forward. Don't make it a goal to look certain way. Just find that range of motion that will really allow you to stay without pinching, without torquing. And it's okay if you fall off the pose or you wobble. It's part of it. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. <laughs> and the next time you inhale, slowly step back, bend the front knee. And as you exhale, step back, walk it out, and shake the tension off. Awesome. Warrior three on the other side. So from Tadasana, step forward with your left foot, bend the knee, back foot, um, uh, you lift the heel and just maybe bounce a little bit, let know that front foot that you're going all in, and when you're ready, lift the back foot. And once more, we check in with the hip, make sure it's not pinching, and then we try a couple of those up and downs until we find that place that works for us. And we start from here. Try to balance here first before you try to go all in into your pose. The truth being is that once you go into full uh, position, more often than not, it didn't work this time, but more often than not, once you get all in, it is easier for you to stay. But if you stay back a little bit, it's not as easy. Like those little muscles that usually don't work, get to work. Use your breath. One more. With control, step back with your right foot as you inhale, and as you exhale, step back, walk it out, and shake it. We're gonna go down onto the mat, so when you are ready, no fancy way. I wanted us to go on a squat, but I changed my mind. You can have your um, blanket under the knees once you get down here, and sit back on your heels. Take a few moments, maybe close your eyes, hands together. If this is too much, sit cross-legged. If that's too much as well, stay up here on your knees. Find what feels right. We'll take a few moments. Close your eyes and breathe.
We'll take one more breath, full deep breath. Open your eyes, inhale deeply here. And as you exhale, lift your body, use your thighs, and when you get up, squeeze your bum. If you're sitting in cross-legged position, you can stay back there, that's okay. As you inhale, keep your shoulders over the hips with control, sit back. Exhale, lift. Make sure it's not pinching, squeeze your bum once you come up. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Resist the tem temptation of hinging forward so that we can truly work with our quads. Next time you exhale, lift. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale, squeeze. We'll do one more. Inhale down. And exhale. And inhale, slowly down. And exhale, walk your knees apart. Hinge forward, extend your arms, rest your forehead down. If you need to stack your fist under the forehead, please go for it. I'm actually going to do that. It feels better in my body. But you're welcome to stay down here too. We'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. When you're ready, extend your arms to the front of the mat. And as you inhale, come up onto a long tabletop, bring your knees closer together. And on the exhale, tuck your tailbone, bend the elbows in towards the body and lower your body. So keep your shoulders at the level of the elbows. Walk your feet back, engage your legs or glutes. So you're pressing your feet down, extending your legs so much and maybe lifting the hands off the floor. From here, bring your hands out to the sides, palms face down, gaze still down on the floor. Maybe your legs leave the floor too. One more breath. With control, release down. Circle your hands under the forehead. Big toes touch, heels out. Notice your heartbeat, notice your breath. The next one, if you have knee problems, I will show you one option with the strap. You might wanna try that. Bring your hands under the shoulders and push yourself up. So you're gonna take your strap, maybe you double it, and place it under your feet, under your ankles actually. And then half the ends of the strap towards you. Go down and reach for the strap. Bend your knees, have the strap short, draw your blades together and breathe. So this can be enough for many of us. Having um, the knees bent, this can be a nice stretch for the quads. You can shorten, shorten your strap as much as you need to. Some of you even here, Try to lift the knees, but you don't have to. Some of you 
will hold onto your ankles. Make sure that you don't have uh, any knee concerns, hip, shoulder, high blood pressure, heart condition. You know the drill. Make sure that this feels right. So if you go into this, flex your feet, draw your blades together, lift your chest. You can do it with, without the strap. Maybe lift your feet, pressing them against your hands and your hands against your feet. So once again, stay within the pose that feels good. You can also try to reach back for your heels and that can put enough demand on your lower back to work those muscles, but without pinching. Make sure it's not pinching, by the way. We'll take one more breath in whatever version you take, you have taken. And with control, as you exhale, release your strap. If you're using one, release your feet, circle your arms across the floor, hands under the forehead, big toes touch, heels out. Watch your breath. Take one more breath, full deep breath. Inhale, hands under the shoulders. Exhale, push up on your knees. Curl the toes under, pick up the knees, and stretch back on downward dog. Remember, downward dog is an option. You can take your blanket out of the way if you want. You can also go on your elbows. You can also go on your um, stretch here on your knees, the intense cat stretch. Try to retract your rib cage if you can to elongate your back, tailbone up. Whichever version, stay there for three more breaths. One more breath. Inhale, tabletop from wherever you are, knees down, hands on the floor, and exhale, walk your hands towards your feet. Hands to feet, sit back. You are welcome to have your blanket as a support. Um, I like, or if you have a blog, like to have it just thick enough to tilt my pelvis forward. And then sit cross-legged, bring your right leg in front, shoulders back and down. Now lengthen through the spine here as you inhale, and as you exhale, rotate your torso towards your right. We only go as far as the hips and the back allow. We're not trying to get deeper, just see what will work for you and then bring your left hand onto your right thigh. Breathe deeply. Inhale your right arm up. And as you exhale, gently side bend towards your left. It is a gentle side bend. Don't go so deep once again. Try to contain yourself at the center. Elongate your body instead. Open your torso. Next time you inhale, reach up, exhale, arm down, and rotate your torso forward. Extend your legs if you can do it without using your arms. And as you exhale, cross your legs the other way. So this time, left leg in front of the right. Draw your navel in, pull it up, engage as you press your body against the floor. And exhale, rotate your torso towards your left. Once again, we find that rotation that works for the body. Bring your right hand to the left thigh. Left arm reaches up, inhale here, and as you exhale, side bend to your right. Think about openness rather than length and, and sinking onto the side, elongate. If this doesn't work, adjust your arm, by the way. If you want a deeper extension, you can move your fingertips towards the right. With control, inhale, reach up, 
Exhale, hand down and rotate forward. Lean back, extend your legs and shake the tension up. Awesome. Now, we're gonna sit comfortably on our Sukhasana. You can sit also on your heels if you like. You can sit on Dandasana. You don't have to keep your feet active. If this is comfortable for you, I know this pose might be comfortable for you. Um, it's not for me, but if it is for you, go for it. Just wanna make sure that your hips and your knees are happy here. So Sukhasana or Half Lotus, or any other uh, pose that will work for you. Lotus, if it's in your practice. Then when you are ready, you're gonna bring the tip of the index finger against the tip of the thumb. Like if you were pinching the thumb with your index and then curl the other fingers in, bring your mudra right at the creases of the legs and push gently down grounding through the through your hips draw your shoulder blades together pull them down close your eyes slightly tuck your chin and breathe chingmaya mudra grounding mudra feel your energy flowing Don't change your breath, just observe it. Try to make your breath a little um, more, a little gentler, a little softer, softer, and a little longer. Although your mudra is soft, you're gently pressing your um, hips down, your elbows back, your shoulder blades together. You are in a still position, but you are activating your muscles. Especially on the exhalation, when there is emptiness, Think about lifting the pelvic floor a little bit, just gentle lift. That's your mula banda. Then draw your navel in and pull it up in towards your rib cage. Udhyana banda. Slightly tucking the chin, breathing, rising and falling. Relax your facial muscles, keep your eyelids softly closed, keep your breath flowing. Peaceful breath equals peaceful mind. I'll take one more breath here, full deep breath. Relax your face, your jaw. Release your mudra. 
you have spilled some heat, so you are welcome to make cups with your hands and bring that prana to whichever part of your body you know needs healing. Maybe it's just your emotions, then take your hands to your Anahata Chakra, the center of your chest at a heart level. Maybe you need some strength today, maybe hopping your Manipura Chakra, your power center right below the sternum. Maybe today you want to be more creative, more in tune with your higher mind, then perhaps move your hands down into your, below the navel, into your tummy below the lower parts of your belly. Maybe you need to ground yourself and work with your um, Mula Bandha Chakra to feel safe. You can ground through your legs, through your feet and just push yourself down. Whatever it is that you feel you need today, whatever quality, maybe it's an organ, maybe it's a joint, whatever that is, we'll take a couple more breaths here. Maybe with your eyes closed, if you feel comfortable in your next breath, extend your legs and shake the tension off and find your way onto your Shavasana. See if you can keep that meditative state of mind once you get there. Relax your hands by your sides. Take a few moments. If you like, Go on to your butterfly position to finally equalize. You can go into a bridge pose, just like we did before, drawing your blades together if you want more activity, if you want more of a relaxing, closing, then go on to that butterfly position. Move your head side to side. Now, those of you who chose bridge pose, Remember that you want your blades together and shoulders under, squeeze your bum, tuck your tailbone and lift without flattening the neck. You don't have to stay up there for too long. If you're going for that pose, take three more breaths there and then release yourself onto Shavasana. Those of you in butterfly position, continue to soften through your legs, your hips, your shoulders, your arms. Relax your hands and fingers, relax your face, your jaw. Take one more breath, full deep breath. And if you are on your Subtavada Konasana, the next time you exhale, bring your knees up, extend your legs onto the mat, relax. If you need more Shavasana time, you can stop the video now and maybe close with me later or with us later. Otherwise, send the awareness down to your feet, wiggle your toes, move your feet side to side, wiggle your fingers, Stretch your arms overhead, tense and squeeze every muscle, tight, 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 prune face, all tensions to the hands. Exhale, release. Again, inhale deeply, stretch and tense and squeeze every muscle, all stresses, pains, tensions to the hands. Exhale, let them go. Last one, inhale, stretch and tense and squeeze, tight, tight, tight. Exhale, release. Awesome. Now when you're ready, you're going to bend your knees, 
Move towards your favorite side. Take a few moments. Check in again with your body, with your breath. And the next time you exhale, use your top hand and help yourself up onto your seated position. You can sit again on your, um, on your blanket if you like. Any cross-legged will do. Bring your hands together at the center of the heart, shoulders back and down. Close your eyes for a few moments. Reconnect with your breath. Relax your jaw, your face. Inhale deeply. Exhale. Inhale to Om. Om. Relax your jaw, your face, rub your hands together. Keep breathing. Mukula mudra over your eyes. Blink your eyes open. Breathe in, expand. Side out. Inhale. Side out. Last one. Inhale. Let all tension out. And remember. Build up extra good vibes and shower yourself with them and then shake off all tensions. All worries, all stresses. Thank you so much, yogis. Have a wonderful day. Namaste.